everyone welcome to a very special video today i am doing my very first not with me and my very first q a ever because we hit 20,000 subscribers before we jump into the q a i just wanted to quickly say thank you guys so much for subscribing and just watching my videos it is seriously so crazy to see and at the same time really awesome so i appreciate every single view every single comment and it's really fun to interact with everyone within this very small but wonderful community so again thank you all so much this is an amazing milestone and to celebrate that i am going to talk over a bracelet that i am nodding and i'm going to answer some questions so I did a temporary Instagram story and YouTube community post asking for you guys to send me questions, whether it be bracelet related or on the more personal side. And I must say, I am a little bit surprised that I didn't really get any personal questions. They're all pretty much bracelet related. I didn't get too many questions either, which is also kind of nice because I won't be overwhelmed with answering questions. And hopefully that means that this won't be too long of a video. <laughs> so the first question, I got a few pretty similar ones, so I've kind of lumped them all together, but there were pretty much questions like, how did I get involved in the community or discover patterns when I started making bracelets? What got me into them and how did I learn to make such amazing bracelets? Which, thank you, number one. <laughs> but my memory of making bracelets is a little bit spotty because I don't remember exactly what year I started or how I got into them because I didn't have any friends who made bracelets. I just somehow on YouTube found out about Beyond Bracelets. If anybody has been making bracelets long enough, you probably know who that is, but she was the first channel I learned to make bracelets from. And then I found out about friendshipbracelets.net and that's where I had found out about more patterns existing than just the ones that I watched on YouTube. So I would say I've been making bracelets for like 10 years now. I started making tutorials a bit later on in my bracelet making hobby, but I would say about 10 years would be pretty close. So it's been a really long time and I usually am in and out of that hobby because sometimes I just really get tired of it like any other hobby, but Currently, I've been probably the deepest into it out of all the years. <laughs> so the second question is pretty much the favorite bracelet or bracelets I've made or patterns I enjoy. And one of my most favorite bracelets I ever made was July last year, and it was a very simple pattern to make. I think I liked it because of the simplicity and because of the color choices I made. The rainbow is super vibrant and they just look really nice. Like they look like bracelets you would buy in a store, which might be a little too much of a brag because I made them, but I just think it, they turned out so beautiful. And as far as patterns I enjoy, I do like patterns that are very repetitive and work up super fast because I don't like to work on bracelets in one sitting. I take a lot of breaks and I'll take long breaks in between. I do work on them fast, but I just like to take a lot of breaks. So anything that's super repetitive and if each set within the segment nodding is a bigger chunk, I will be more drawn towards it because I know it'll be really quick to finish up. Which kind of goes along with the next question, which is do I like normal patterns more or alphas more and why I prefer thinner bracelets? So. I have mentioned a few times before, at least on Instagram, I don't know if I have on YouTube, but I have mentioned before that I like to make thinner bracelets, so I like to stay in the 12 string range just because I'm just such, I'm so stingy <laughs> with my thread. I don't know. I always over measure my thread and I really hate wasting thread because I just don't like to buy it very often because my collection has thread from years ago that I'm still trying to use up before I try and sort of pick palettes that I want to work with more often. And I also just really don't like to work with a lot of strings at once. Like 
In this knot with me here, I am working on a 14 string bracelet, which I am warming up to a little bit more, but I typically just don't like larger bracelets because it's just so much string. And again, I am a string hoarder, so I don't like to use a lot of it. And yeah, just with thinner bracelets, you don't use as much thread. You don't have to cut them too long, all that. And Obviously, I do prefer normal patterns way more than alphas, but I am sort of getting into alphas. Like, they take me a really long time to make and I don't enjoy that, but I've been learning how to do them with a much more cleaner look. And alphas are really hard for me to make because I am a perfectionist and they're just so hard to perfect, but I'm working on it. I love the look of alphas so I would just love to be able to make them really well. So I do prefer normal patterns 9 times out of 10 but there are times where I will want to work on an alpha and I go crazy on them. So next question, my favorite colors and why? As far as bracelets go, it kind of depends on the pattern. If there is a pattern that works very well with the rainbows, i.e. 12 strings and 6 colors, then I am going to want to use a rainbow immediately, and I love any kind of rainbow color palette. The one that is made up of my favorite bracelet and the one in this video, I love these rainbow color palettes so much. I just googled rainbow color palettes for DMC and that came up. And yeah, I, I just love rainbows and otherwise, it's just random when it comes to color palettes for bracelets. I love gradients and yeah, just just very structured color palettes, but I, I love all colors pretty much. Have I bought any new string? I actually did back at the end of January of 2021, aka this year, I bought some of this sort of DMC knockoff thread called Sullivan's, which is from a crafting website called My Notions. I'd say it's not really similar to DMC. I would say maybe it'd be more closer to like JMP coats or something because it's not shiny like DMC thread is, but it is really nice to work with and it's cheaper than DMC. So I bought that string because I want to do a rainbow of gradient bracelets to eventually revamp my profile banner and maybe even make an end card. but. I've been really lazy on that, so all that string is still bagged up and I will eventually get to it, but I also don't really like to make multiples of the same pattern, so it'll be a lengthy project for sure so I don't burn myself out because I already did that once with a different rainbow palette of bracelets and I still have yet to finish those bracelets and it's been like six months, so that project will be done whenever it wants to be done. And do I have any work in progresses at the moment? I do have a bag of bracelets that are unfinished that I just get bored of and I put them away and for now I haven't even gone back to them, but otherwise not really working on anything as I'm doing this voiceover. Because I finished the bracelet that you're watching right now actually in the video. You'll see that at the end, spoiler alert, <laughs> but now it's just looking at the next pattern to make. <laughs> so this is pretty much the only quote unquote personal question I got and it is what do I do for a living and what are my other hobbies that I have? So what I do for a living is pretty boring. I just do a pretty basic office job where I'm scanning in documents, doing data entry and stuff like that. But I do have actually quite a lot of hobbies and probably too much. <laughs> I used to do a lot of drawing and painting and I'm kind of not into it right now just because I'm working on so many other hobbies, but I do like to paint. I am an artist, a lot of traditional art, a lot of digital art. I picked up cross stitching again in the past couple years. I crochet from time to time. Crocheting really isn't my most favorite thing to do anymore just because it's also very time consuming depending on what you want to make, but I have that. I have my bracelets, of course. I just have a lot of random hobbies and I don't stick with all of them most of the time. Like 
I will go through spurts of a hobby and then I just kind of drop it and I don't go back to it, but I have all the crafts still available to me if I do want to go back to them, but I would say bracelet making is a really big one for me right now. And another question I got, and one that I also get pretty regularly aside from this special occasion, is do I sell my bracelets? And right now I don't. I have sold to friends and family and stuff like that. But as far as having an online shop and all that, I unfortunately don't really want to do that right now. But it is something that I do want to pursue in the future. I don't know how soon or far into the future that'll be, but I would love to experiment with that. For now, I do not sell at all. And then for my final question, did I think I would grow when I made my YouTube channel? And the obvious answer is no. <laughs> I was very young when I first made this YouTube channel, and it wasn't even under the Craft and Attic name, but I didn't make any sort of crafty videos until about like eight years ago, I think. I had made really random crafty videos, but I didn't think I would really make it that far. It was just something fun to do. The person who got me into bracelets in the first place on YouTube inspired me to make my own videos. and. Then I got to a point where I could monetize them, and it was pretty cool. I did not make money for a very long time, which was fine with me, and it's it's been great. Like, making money is not important to me, especially since I do have another job, but it's a really nice way to be able to kind of have my efforts recognized, like all of my filming, my editing, and everything that I do for this channel. Even if it doesn't look like a lot, I do spend so much time even just thinking about it and so it's really nice to see that payoff and i'm really excited yeah. to see what the future is going to hold for me because i don't plan to stop anytime soon i'll just kind of make videos as i want to upload when i want to and it's just fun that way this channel is really just another hobby for me too i guess <laughs> but that is essentially all the questions i got for this video and again I want to say so many thanks for the 20,000 subscriber milestone. It's It just blows my mind. Like, I, I just did not think that many people would subscribe to this channel. So I thank you all so much. Even if you just subscribed like a week ago, it's still just as important as those who have been subscribed since the beginning, you know? So I appreciate all of you and I hope to continue to make really good content for you guys and even better as the years go on. But yeah, the bracelet is finished. The Q&A is finished. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you liked getting to know a little bit more about me in the bracelet world. <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next one.